good to not be there. Hi, welcome back to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel, and we're here at Metro East Community Media. Thanks very much for staying with us. Our, my next guests are from SMERC, and that stands for the Sexual and Gender Minority Youth Resource Center. Did I get it all in there? <laughs> okay, and with me tonight, Giovanni McKenzie, uh, who is with SMERC, and Sarah Freeman. Thanks for being here, both of you. Thank you for having us. Oh, we're having de us. I'm delighted. I met Sarah at a, an event at, um, it was a Midland Library, I think yeah. it was, with different nonprofits talking about dealing with youth and things that we have available to youth in the community. So, um, and I didn't know anything about SMERC. So we talked a little bit, and um, I'm really delighted to have you both on here. Giovanni, I want to start with you a little bit. Um, how long have you been involved with SMERC, and how did you get involved? Sure. So I have been involved with SMERC since um, 2010 when I moved here from Jamaica. Oh, okay. And it's That's a just, big move. <laughs> oh, trust me, it has been a big move. And, you know, it was quite interesting because, you know, I lived in a country where it's not easy for you to be homophobic, to be, you know, homosexual. You're right, right. You know, it's quite a homophobic country. For example, I was there like three days ago. And, oh, you were? Oh, trust oh, me, it was, back. it was crazy because, you know, I could not fit in. I was yeah. just used to be in my very queer self. <laughs> so when I got back to the US, I was saying to my friend, oh gosh, I'm so happy and delighted to be my gay self again. It must be tough because even though you, you I'm sure you have love for the country that you're from. Of course And the people do. there, to not feel accepted is, it's gotta be really difficult. It is, but you know, it's so good to have places like Smirk where, you know, it's providing a very safe place. Mm -hmm for you to be themselves and to really love themselves and yeah. to find people like them so they can grow. Good, good. So what, what kinds of things do you do there? What, what kinds of uh, programs or what, what's offered? Maybe Sarah, why don't you tell me a little bit. Uh, you are, now your job there is the Youth Program Coordinator, right? Tell me a little bit about the, what do you have to offer kids? Sure, so uh, it's a resource center. So one of the main programs we have is a drop-in center. Um, which means people come in three days a week. It's Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 4 to 9, so in the evening. Um, and they can use the computers, go online, use the kitchen, make some food, lots of interesting kitchen experiments happening. Um, also, there's a stage, so we have performance nights, open mic nights, drag nights, um, haircutting salon where you can get a... Uh, Amateur haircut. Um, <laughs> if you're no if you're, uh, oh, trust me, I'm due for my enough. haircut soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Giovanni is modeling a lovely smirk haircut right now. Sure. Like um, some other programming that we've started these days. For example, uh, a couple weeks ago, we have a new program that we're working with some of the awesome drag queens here in Portland. Mm -hmm. And they're you know really educating youth who are interested in you know having a career in drag. Oh. And you know, really being there to mentor them, to go over things like makeup, hair, shoes. Right now, we are really creating a space for you know younger folks. You know, mm -hmm. between like the ages of like twelve and eighteen. Is that about the age kids start coming there? Or is there a, a lower limit as to when they can start dropping um, in? Actually, at Smirk, our age groups are like twelve to twenty-three. Mm -hmm. But we're really trying to make this uh, very, I wouldn't, it's a space that just for homework for like middle school and high school oh, children. Good. Yeah, so you know, we have community members come in, you know, who are very good at math and English mm -hmm. and all those cool stuff. Not just shoes and makeup. <laughs> <laughs> all are important. Yes. The, the, everything has its place, but you don't get all of that at every school. Exactly. Right? Plus, you know, a lot of these kids are just trying to find somewhere that they can call their own. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's basically helping these young kids with, you know, homework needs that might not really have parents to help them with mm -hmm. or might have people who can actually assist them. And whether, whether or not they are gay. Exactly. I mean, exactly. There are I mean, I'm not, what I'm saying is that a lot of kids have nobody to help them, so that may, being gay may not even be part of the equation. Mm -hmm. It's just they happen to be, so this is a good, safe place for them. Well, so um, Smirk is a place that's specifically for LGBTQ is our current acronym. Yeah, yeah so I know. We say. It's hard to keep up on it. Just, just Smirks. Lots okay. of places have other acronyms mm -hmm. too. Um, so we're 
using that one, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, and questioning youth. So we do have nights where allies are welcome, but the majority of the time it is for folks that identify um, as sexual or gender minorities, like our name suggests. Right, right. The, the last cue is interesting to me, the questioning. So do you get a lot of, of kids that are just sort of they're just not real sure. They're just, you know, they're thinking maybe, we maybe do. this is their sexual orientation, we orientation do. but or they're afraid to. We do. Um, one thing that you find a lot is that you find a lot of youth from families that it's not quite safe for them mm -hmm. to be themselves. It's not okay. So you know, they come to Smirk really not quite sure who they are. Mm -hmm. So you know, for example, a couple of weeks ago we had this one youth and. You know, they were just so quiet. They wouldn't talk to anyone. And you know, they weren't even comfortable walking in the building. Mm. So it's just being able to foster these youths and just being there, you right. know, holding their hands, right. making sure that they have all their needs met. Yeah. And you know, just supporting them, give them that support that they don't really have. And we're proud to really have our umbrella programming with um, for counseling mm -hmm. because you know these individuals are you know trained counselors who are there to support youth and you know at Smirk we are not one of those community centers that send your bill <laughs> 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 after yeah. our services because you know many of these youth can't even afford it sure you sure. know you would be surprised to see how many of the homeless youth that we take care of at Smirk mm -hmm. so and, you know many of these youth don't even know where to go to, to find these services I imagine that um, being either questioning or you've already, you know, decided, you know, this is my sexual orientation and you're okay with it, just um, if your family isn't accepting of it, that's probably where a lot of those kids end up becoming homeless kids, I would think, because, you know, if they don't have any place to go, if they don't have that support network, it sounds like you, yourself, and probably a lot of others there are actually have been around long enough that you're comfortable mentoring the younger ones or the people that are just coming in. Is that kind of how it works? You help sure. each other? Yeah. I you know one thing that I found interesting is that a couple of years ago I was at Smirk and there's this one youth who I met who is from the Middle East, mm -hmm. actually from the Northwest. <laughs> actually, no. Somewhere around there. Somewhere not here. You know, it was. <laughs> trust me, I'm not good at geography. <laughs> I travel a lot, but I'm terrible you know at it. Jamaica, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it was quite interesting to know how far this person came from. Mm -hmm. You know, spent days upon days traveling to Portland because, you know, he heard of this place that you can be yourself. Really? You know, exactly. And That's you know, pretty impressive. Even though he knew that he would not really have, you know, a blood um, family member here in Portland, he really just knew that he had to leave his house. Mm -hmm. And you know, he was just determined to get away from it because you know he was like, you know, I'm sick and tired of this abuse. Yeah. Family doesn't always have to be blood relatives. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you find your family where you find them. Oh, trust me. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about the bullying. I mean, yeah, that's bullying. Obviously, is in the news a lot now, and but and it's for all youth and and for adults too. Really, you hear about it everywhere. But um, it's probably especially difficult, I would think, for for a gay youth and. Um, or LGBT, <laughs> T, the uh, alphabet okay, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and, and and suicide is a real issue, and it that's is. that's so so sad. That's such a final final last decision to make, and it's just um, it yeah it breaks it breaks my heart when I hear about kids that have taken their lives because they've been bullied, because they're not accepted. Um, have you run into that? Have you personally experienced um, people that have had to go oh, through well, that? Oh, trust me, I'm from Jamaica. <laughs> what does yeah. that mean? Well, what does it's, that mean it's to you, funny Bonnie? Because, like, um, I, so here's what happened. You know, traveling 17 hours from Portland, from Portland to Seattle to Miami to Kingston, Jamaica, <laughs> and I am just in the airport and I'm just exhausted. You know, I'm my body is not used to the humidity. It's hot. It's dry. You know, I live in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, so. it's a little bit different. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm used to the wet and the cold, and you know, I was just tired and exhausted and just a bit cranky and. You know, this police officer came up to me in the Jamaican airport and she's like, who are you? Where's your passport? What are you doing here? <laughs> so, you know, I have to explain to myself the first time, you know, I was like, okay, well, it's just maybe, you know, routine. 
Yeah, because yeah, um, you don't know. You don't exactly. Know. Yeah. And, you know, after like five minutes later, I see this other policeman talking to that first policewoman. And he comes up to me answering the exact same question. And I'm like, am I being harassed here? Yeah. yeah. You know, really just asking myself because like, you know, I said to him, well, you just spoke with that policewoman. You know, so you know the answers already, don't exactly, you? Exactly. You yeah. know the answers already. And I saw her when she looked at me. So am I being harassed here? And, you know, it wasn't in a way that I was attacking him. Right. It was in a very, you know, constructive, it was a very constructive question. And so definitely, you know, not just being socially abused, but, you know, even by law enforcement. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. And, and, and I think any minority has that issue at some point or another where you're being treated differently, but you don't know exactly why. True. You know, is, it, is it because they are homophobic or they don't like black people or they don't <laughs> like Native American people or, you they know, don't whatever. Like black people. You know, but, but you know, there are, there, there are a lot of people out there that just don't like you if you're different, you know? True. They don't like middle-aged white women. I don't know. <laughs> you know so, <laughs> what you is know? about you like someone could not like? Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> I like him. Um, <laughs> so, you're a doll. Anyway, <laughs> tell me, um, tell me, Sarah, yeah. tell me what um, you have, how is Smirk funded? How do, you, how do you support this organization? Sure, so Smirk is a program of Q Center as of about a year ago. Um, Q Center, which is a community center for LGBTQ Q people of all ages in Portland. Um, so we're a program under them. We get a lot of funding from the county. Um, also, funding isn't something that's my primary focus mm -hmm. while coordinating youth programming, so I probably shouldn't speak too much about <laughs> it unless I uh, leave some important people off of that list. Um, but yeah, we definitely are grateful for a lot of community support. We have a 15-year history, um, so a lot of folks know about us, and a lot of folks will come in and say, like, I was a smart youth 10 years ago wow. or, you know, 15 years ago or whatever, and I want to give back, I want to volunteer, I want to donate. Um, so we have a lot of great community support. So you continue to have need for volunteers and donations, mm -hmm. financial and otherwise? Are there other things people Definitely. can donate that you can use there? What well, kind of things sure. would you Sure, um, you know, with all the homeless youth that we have, you know, we can never have enough clothing. Mm -hmm. You know, we can yeah. never have enough um, things that are easily accessible that you know don't take up enough weight mm -hmm. because you find a lot of these homeless um, homeless youth they carry all their things with mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. so you know they need to be as small as possible that they can easily pack with them like like mm -hmm. small like toiletries and things like exactly. toothpaste and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff and you know yeah. we are very um blessed because a couple of weeks ago there was this these really nice donations mm -hmm. that came in and it has a lot of toiletries that, you know, you could travel with them in a really nice travel size. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, trust me, I'm not homeless, but I found a lot of those conditioners <laughs> very <laughs> For your new hairstyle. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So if people are interested, they could go to your website, probably find yeah. out how they can donate or, or become involved and volunteer. Absolutely. So it's just smirk.org. And uh, also, I'll mention a couple of other things. Okay. Food is always something that we're looking for. Okay. Um, we do get some food donations, but uh, so you have a staples. kitchen there. Yeah, yeah we do have, do have a you have kitchen. storage for. I mean, do you want only like dry can box goods? That's or do awesome. You have... Or sometimes we have folks that want to like cook a meal for the night and oh, bring that nice. in. Nice. I like yeah, that. You know, you find out a lot of the youth they come in and to be honest, they really just like a hot meal. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I, I know a couple months ago we got like a huge shipment of like. Like bottled juice and stuff mm -hmm. and trust me as soon as those come in they they're gone they're yes. gone yeah. you know we have we usually we have like our weekly meetings and like pizza boxes comes in you know you have to like put it on a pause because everyone is going to leave to go grab some food yeah uh, don't, don't take it personally. This isn't about you. It's oh, about no. the food. Yeah. <laughs> well, I find it interesting. Um, a couple of minutes ago, you know, you were talking about how hard it is to be a minority. And one of the new programming that we're really going into is really being able to focus on those um, intersection, um, those intersectionalities where, you know, you find individuals who are not just black. Mm -hmm. They might be, you know, a, a black middle-aged woman. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You know, so they're, they're, they, they fit in a couple different of Exactly. Those, and you find that, you know, the more 
intersections they get is, you know, more marginalized they mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. So, Definitely. you know, Definitely. one of the new programming that we're focusing on, focused on is queer intersections. And we're really excited for it. Actually, I'm very excited for it because it's really giving us the opportunity to focus on those people who sometimes feel very forgotten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you are thinking of someone who is, you know, this is an immigrant who is trans just transgender, mm -hmm. you know, or worse, a transgender um, undocumented individual. Yeah. Oh, very scary. You know, yeah. and trust me, that's yeah. a very scary, um, yeah. that would be a very scary lifestyle. I'm sure it would be. You yeah. know, and I'm pretty dangerous, sure there's a lot of them here, here in Portland. Sure right. mm -hmm. And you know, I don't even know how they do it because you know, I am, I'm not an American citizen. I am a Jamaican living here as a permanent resident. And, you know, if it's hard for me with all those legal things, you, you know, imagine. not being able to vote, which right, is, right. you know, a very big one. Because mm -hmm. trust me, you know, politicians don't really care about what I say. I care. <laughs> well, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's, I think it's so important to actually give these people a voice. I think that's you know, true. make it give them a space where people can actually hear what their struggles are. And we're very excited for this, we are. That sounds great, and, and before we run out of time, it sounds like another place where voice can be heard is at the Youth Summit. Yeah, so the Oregon Youth So tell me Youth about Youth that. That's, we're excited for it. Yeah, oh, that's yes. at Jefferson High School on May 11th, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what's that all about? I, we don't have very much time, but I want to, I know this is an oh, important sorry. thing, so sorry. 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 go ahead. Yeah, so the Oregon Queer Youth Summit, OCUS, is uh, planned by a partnership of SMERC, Cascade AIDS Project, a uh, whole bunch of youth and adults on the planning committee and uh, supported by organizations like the Oregon Safe Schools and Communities Coalition um, and many more. And what it is is a big conference by and for LGBTQ, Q, and <laughs> allied youth. So it's uh, we're hoping to get about 24 workshops um, nice. all led by and for youth. Um, the workshop topics range from how to start a GSA to um, figuring out what, uh, what these new laws related to tuition, tuition equity mean oh. for youth oh, to um, Drag 101, figuring out how to do your makeup. So it's a Everything. really wide span of topics. Um, we do have speakers coming in and then in the evening we'll have Queer prom, which is Harry Potter oh, themed. Fun, yeah, fun, fun, funny. Fun. And it's not just queer prom, thinking, you know, thinking about Harry Potter Yule Ball. Yes, thank you. It's what now? Yeah? The so Harry Potter Yule Ball theme. Harry Potter Yule Ball. And trust me, honey, this is my favorite part <laughs> of Ocus because, you know, this year we're having drag queens, we're going to be having, you know, some bands playing. We're going to be having You're some crazy have DJs. Yeah, you, so it's going to be, be a night to remember. It sounds like yes. great. It sounds like it has something for everybody. Go to the, learn something during the day, mm -hmm. expand your knowledge, and then party at night. Oh, party at night. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I want to hear. I want you back on oh, later. <laughs> after the party. That, and then you know, update yeah. me on what's going on with Smirk. Sure. And we're so excited. I did want to mention, too, that there's a website there where okay. folks can go and register. And it's chatpdx, C H A T P D X. Nice and easy. Dot org slash OCUS, so O Q Y S. And uh, that's a place where folks can go and register. Also, we have about a week more for people to submit workshop proposals and uh, speaker applications. And both of those are uh, those folks that get chosen will receive honorariums. So we do want to compensate people nice. for their hard work. So definitely are looking for more applications Good. for for Good. those and and people to attend sure and and people to attend volunteer table organizations great. to table yeah wonderful and for like for more information on um smirk you can also visit www.smirk.org that's okay. s m y rc.org. Yes. Very good, very good. Very <laughs> it's been good. a long day. Yeah, I'm sure it has. <laughs> Thank you both so much for being on here to share your information about Smirk. And, and I hope that people will, um, you know, if they have an interest in the summit, that they will go. Or if they are interested in donating or volunteering, that they'll check it out. And plus, you have the drop in center, which is uh, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 4 to 9 p.m. You got mm -hmm. it. On Sandy Boulevard. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Sandy. <laughs> oh, Sarah, help me out on that one. But uh, <laughs> thank you both so much. I really appreciate it. And thanks again for watching this segment of Community Hotline. You know where to go to check it out and find out more about Smirk. And uh, I hope you'll be here next week because I'll be waiting for you. I'm Monica Weitzel. This is Community Hotline. <laughs>